This conference will now be recorded. All right, go ahead. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much, Gail. I see that we've got a quorum with four of us on board. So uh, let's open the meeting for Tuesday, June the 9th, 2020 at 10 a.m. Uh, please have roll call. Okay, Robert Strickland? Here. Myrna Patrick? Here. Bruce Francis? Here. John Orr did email me this morning and said he had another commitment come up, so he will not be here today. Uh, Mike Magyar has resigned. Chris Farrar? Present. And Nadia Gardner? Present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next thing on is adopting the agenda. I'll take a motion and a second to adopt the agenda as presented. I move, to I adopt move the we agenda. adopt the agenda as presented. Be moved by Chris. I second. And Nadia is seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, business from the public. This is an opportunity for anyone to give a brief presentation around any land use planning issue or county concern that's not on the agenda. Gail, did you have anybody that wishes to participate? We did not receive any written comments. I don't know if there's anybody who's in attendance right now that would uh, like to speak. I don't see anybody really besides us and staff. Okay, uh, hearing none, we'll pass on to the minutes. The May the 12th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. I uh, move that we adopt yeah. the uh, May 12th regular or minutes of the regular meeting of the Planning Commission as presented. Second, second the motion. Okay, somebody has to decide who won there. I won. I know you made the motion, but who seconded? Nadia was there. Nadia did. Nadia did? Okay. Yeah. Be moved. Moved by Robert and seconded by Nadia. No, I don't I don't think I did. I didn't even talk in that one. That was it Myrna. was me. It was Myrna. It was Myrna. It must have been Myrna. Okay. Oh. Uh, let's <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Sorry, Nadia. Sorry to uh, accuse you of speaking when you didn't. <laughs> We'll take uh, Robert as having moved it and uh, Marina as having seconded it. So it's being moved to adopt the agenda of the May 12 no. uh, uh, minutes. minutes. Yeah, May 12 regular meeting minutes uh, as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and uh, anybody opposed? Hearing none, that's unanimous. Thank you. So we'll go to the Code Consolidation and Modernization, Articles 1 and 6. Um, is Julia presenting that? I can certainly present that if um, I can get somebody to move the screen down a little bit um, to the memo. There we go. Um, and there really isn't. I think so much anything for me to present as to let you know this is um, a fairly exhaustive list of everything that we moved or that I moved in articles one and six and it consolidated um, sections of code from um, other parts of the standards document um, and and basically one of the things that I did originally with this was a strikeout version and I want you to know that it was a very painful version. It mm. was um, extremely difficult to read and it took many, many hours. And I don't think I'm the only one who did it this way. We um, briefly considered doing a strikeout version for your board. And um, honestly, it was so confusing and you would have spent many, many, many hours with it. Honestly, you don't get paid enough. To look at this version of it right. as the strikeout right. version um, so we did provide you with I think all of us with exhaustive lists of what we moved where it came from and where it went um, 
And so this is Article 1, and then you get to about uh, line or item number 15, and it switches to Article 6. So I guess I'd be more interested in entertaining questions if you have any. Um, but honestly, you know, <laughs> it's um, if there are errors in it, and there probably are, um, they are well intended, and we can fix anything later as we run into it. Right. Uh, I, I do have some little odd notes that were not really meant to prove that I'd gone through 700 pages, but um, yeah, there's such things as somewhere on ag, there is quote unquote, if a public need is demonstrated. Uh, and I, I know that shows up a couple of places and, and that seems, uh, it is kind of a odd from another era, you know. I, I I remember on on British planning, you couldn't build, you couldn't do some things unless you demonstrated that there was a need for it. And 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 our good old American way was more uh, let the market decide whether or not it is needed. Go ahead and do it. So I'm I'm just raising as a topic to think twice about is it a superfluous statement to say if a public need is demonstrated i i think somewhere it even described what was what how you would de decide you know was it a significant public need so i, I i'm just adding that to julia's list of <laughs> Thing of, of crud to ponder. Uh, so, so as you do a, a search, you know, a search and replace, take a look for if a public need is demonstrated. Uh, is that superfluous? Do we really want it in there? Uh, period. The uh, another one had to do with land transportation facilities uh, and it was basically prohibiting them across uh, perhaps it was wetlands and and I was simply uh, you know thinking well gee uh, is it okay to have it didn't seem like it was okay to have a equine path across a Fen uh, in, in an interdunal area for horses to get from one knoll to another, because that was a uh, a land transportation facility that was it kind of had a blanket prohibition. So I I think as you come across just for Julia to flag land transportation facilities in pasture land uh just a uh, pause and say does that really prohibit uh putting a path for horses to get across a boggy spot uh because that's what it sounds uh, uh along with that Oh, uh, somewhere there, it shows that we are limited to 50 cubic yards of fill. Uh, it doesn't say per year or forever. And usually those things wind up to being, gee, you can keep putting your three dump truck loads in, three or four, every year. And it's, and it's just really not that clear. So I thought, again, Julia, for your third little item on your CRUD list, uh, clarify where it says, yeah, it's okay to put in 50 cubic yards of fill. Uh, and I guess- yeah, Robert, no, Robert one, on that one, on that one, the 50 cubic yards, I think that's taken directly from Department of State Lands and the Corps of Engineers. And my understanding was that you're allowed to do that 
uh, 50 cubic yards once a year. And then you would have to go to the next year before you did it again. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, actually. I think it's a problem with the state level as well as local level, but I think it's actually supposed to be, I mean, intended to be 50 cubic yards total, but people yeah, but total, total per year. No, I don't think so. Okay. Think we, flag it. As fact, we should yeah, add, we should add it though, I'd but. like to see clarification on that. Because that's like, you know, that's a lot of dump trucks of fill per year that would allow complete filling of wetlands over a short period of time. So I think the, that only was reason I, the only reason I bring that up is because for many years I did put 50 cubic yards in and Nadia is well aware of this on the bank of Ecola Creek. And we put 50 up to 50. We had a permit from DSL to put 50 cubic yards of sand per year without the need for a permit so yeah, actually, i'm actually not aware of that luckily i stay out of that whole deal <laughs> but um, <laughs> okay. but i but i i didn't know that they had given uh that's the uh, breakers point um condo development on a cola creek i didn't i wasn't aware that they gave you that but i in the past i've had i feel like you have different interpretations from at different times yeah. from different staff just just on the state level as well as the local level on those things so Right. Um, I would like to. I'd like to look at that law before we anyway. Yeah. On the fact. Yeah. But. Okay. Um, Good uh, I was. Yes. Yeah. I was just going to st step in here just for a moment to remind you that we are not actually revising what's in the code right at the moment. Only taking what's in the code right at the moment and moving it. Rearranging. Um, we are rearranging what is there after right. we get the comprehensive plan. Um, pulled together and adopted, then we're going to break back into the code, and then we will be going through these things. Please do keep your notes. Um, this, these minutia are no, helpful. Keep the notes, um, right? Absolutely, they are helpful. But this isn't the time or the place for you to change or um, be able to introduce new language into the code. We're not doing that today. All we're doing is moving um, and then uh, recommending for adoption all of these different elements that we have taken out of the standards document and rearranged into the um, basically what we'll we'll be referring to colloquially as the law duck um, our new code it is all the same stuff with all of its warts and all of its scars and all of its strange language it's still going to we're, we're not changing the content at all there's no substantive change we're just putting it all together so I, I appreciate all of the comments about the things that we need to keep an eye on um, and I'm making a list of those things and please add to them I have lists from you in previous meetings as well so you know please continue to keep those but today you we're not going to be adopting um, new language or new interpretation or anything like that we're just moving it over. Right. Uh, Julia, while you're so kindly taking notes, uh, I do want to add a, a couple more uh, with your admonition that it doesn't matter. Um, and that is uh, the aquatic natural zone uh, that let's ponder that because it has been very, very narrow and I don't think we've really tried to inventory what sensibly might go in that. You know, does the lower skip is the lower skipadon aquatic? You know, and there, the uh, narrowly we've had the problem say, oh no, all we mean by aquatic are the estuarine things. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if there is tidal influence. Or something. So I'm so so to keep keep your notes short. Uh, I'd say let's do an inventory of what with the plain meaning of aquatic, not the county's funny one that it just means uh, ocean along the ocean. Are things like Slusher Lake appropriate to be aquatic natural? Uh, would the lower skipping on be appropriate to be aquatic natural? Would uh, Carnahan Lake, aka Taylor Lake, be appropriate to be aquatic natural? Because they sure as hell are aquatic, even though 
the county meaning of aquatic doesn't kind of line up with anyone else meaning of aquatic. And then lastly, besides that inventory, you know, where all in the county, you know, that is outside of uh, incorporated areas, uh, you know, so maybe lower neocoxy doesn't even get considered. Uh, let's let's do a bit of an inventory out on the Waluski, you know, places where clearly there is tidal influence. Uh, and should this be aquatic natural? Uh, the last one, I guess I'll have to inject when I find it, but thank you for, oh, one just to Julia's list, what animals are ag and which ones are not ag? You know, like, like, like there's a strange, you know, there are discussions about agricultural uses and like a horse I think is not considered livestock, but a cow is. So this may be something where where Bruce is going to get to escape because he'll be off in Texas where they don't care. But we have to think is is a horse agricultural even though it's not livestock in the in the sense of planning because uh, some of these things where we're supposed to prove that there is adequate pasture for something or other without it causing harm to the water. You know, in other words, yes, our comprehensive plan expects us to be very wary and of things that we never have to think about. Like, does a yama count? Does a cow count? Does a horse count? And it's not as simple. That, that, that's why no one wants to be one of us because we have to ponder these things with utter seriousness, period. Somebody else's turn. Wait, I, I have a general question on this um, and a comment. It, we need to establish some procedure we're gonna use to go through this that is easy to follow along. Um, just picking out certain items in this 700 page document and I noticed some little glitches here and there too but to go through them one by one like this seems like it's just not going to work and I'm wondering what the procedure could could be can we write up a a two or three sentence note on the specific item within the document that we spot an issue with either uh, a, a gross error or a point that needs to be clarified and then come up with a document where the, all those comments are flagged so each of us can go through it before a meeting and give it consideration. Some of these little fix it things are real obvious and I can make up my mind right on the spot, but others like with regard to the one about the 50 yard dumping, is it annual or is it a one-time deal and what areas does it include and all those things. I'd like to have time on my own to look at that comment and then see what I can find out in order to make a more informed decision. And it's gonna be impossible to do that just sitting here in front of a laptop and need time on some of these things. And so I'm wondering if we can work on establishing a reasonable procedure. I had listed down a few things in the definitions that I thought were, were off. And so I don't wanna take up time here trying to talk about them. And I understand Julia's point is, is well taken that, that, that we've just reorganized this thing. So at this point, we're not to the point of making changes, but at some point we will, and we should do that work before it goes to the board of commissioners to approve or not. So 
we have a lot of work and I think we need to figure out how we're going to carry out that work in a in a reasonable way. Chair Francis, may I speak please? Absolutely, yeah. This is Gail Hendrickson, Community Development Director. So again, to re-emphasize what Julia said, the only thing that we came here to talk about today is the reorganization of the code. This is something that we've been speaking to the Planning Commission about since August of 2018. Um, we've tried to be very clear, but perhaps not clear enough that our, our goal right now is to simply combine the two documents to make something that's easier for everybody to use and understand. We've welcomed comments at any time from anyone on the uh, changes that should be made to the code and considered in the future. We will continue to welcome them, whether it's at a formal meeting, uh, whether it's you sending an email at three in the morning because you wake up with something in your head that is keeping you awake and you feel compelled to tell us. Uh, you can call us, you can write us a letter. We will happily accept your comments at any time. Um, as Julia also mentioned, we don't want to start opening up the code for regulation changes until we complete the comp plan update because we're gonna end up duplicating work, changing regulations that have to get changed back again in a couple of years. Um, there are probably some tweaks and glitches that we do need to make before the comprehensive plan uh, amendment is completed or the update is completed, uh, looking at uh, things like adding the definition for commercial trucking, which is one thing that the Planning Commission had requested staff to do. Um, but again, if we could just focus today on um, if you see obvious errors, such as we have misspelled words that we can fix before we take this to the board in July. Um, if you've noticed an incorrect reference to something where we've misquoted a citation, those are the types of things really that we've looked at. We've not done anything different from what you've looked at for, for the past month, a uh, year and a half. So I, I hope that clarifies a bit about what we're doing today and how we can move forward in tracking our changes for the um, future updates to the code. Do we, do we have uh, kind of current clarity about how to express uh, his and her uh, that is either neutral or distaff based? You know, in the language, you know, that that, that thing where mentioned the planning director as a him. Yes. Yeah, so we could just change that to the director. If yeah. That would please everyone. Well, that'd be an easy change to make, so I don't see that would be a problem. <clears throat> uh, Bruce, I would like to say something. Absolutely. Myrna, Please go ahead, Jenna. I, I, I agree with, with, with Gail's comment, and I think anybody that has any information or, or concerns, that they send them in writing to Gail rather than do it right now on the phone, as she said, and in the meantime, she can gather all that information for future meetings. I, I agree with you, Myrna. I have a, a general question. Um, you know, the misspelling of words is software should be able to find that pretty easily. But I noticed a couple places where words weren't misspelled, but they were the wrong word. And I'm wondering, is there software that looks at the context of a sentence and determines where there's uh, an Remember. error? Yeah. Does anybody know that? I've never seen that. Um, it's difficult, yeah, when you have like two like there and there, um, and it doesn't it, it doesn't read the sentence unless it picks it up like a grammar grammatical. It you know well, grammatical. This but. this one that I saw is has got the word lift with a T on the end instead of life. Right, which is a a, a typo that it wouldn't recognize because they're both valid words, right? Yeah, but it must. there must be software now that looks for context because in the context, it was obvious that the word didn't fit. They're probably, yeah. Um, hey, I have a just a quick comment. Um, well, number one, um, I, I wasn't able, I mean, I haven't read the entire thing, you know, uh, oh. letter by letter, I will admit. Um, I'm trusting that staff didn't make substantive changes to this section just as we've been 
watching for in previous sections I um, and have been clear about, uh, I will say there's a bunch of spacing issues throughout the document. So I hope those will be fixed before they go. Um, and I don't feel like it's it should be our job to find those. Um, but um, but I will say, I I know it's tedious sometimes to sit around and listen to people's particular issues, but I think it's important that we hear it along the way, not just at a particular hearing. And I think it's important also that staff hear it and take notes on it and that it be tracked over time so that when we do actually get to, you know, what projects we're going to take up in a year or when we actually get to the ordinance updates, that um, some of the concerns are not just new at the time because they've been brought up, you know, we've been thinking about them and discussing them over years, then I feel like we'll be able to get to get to some solution more quickly. And so I think it's great that Robert brings things up and Chris and others bring things up in each meeting that won't necessarily go into the recommendation to this county commission at this time, but at least is on our minds and we're thinking critically about this, especially when we don't have, you know, heavy lifting in terms of applications on an agenda. Um, I think we should have a little space for discussion like we do. But Nadia, I think that you said it uh, exactly right. The discussion on these issues are not part of what we need to attend to today. Um, we just need to approve the process of how it's been rearranged. But I think that you make a good point that we should all try and find as many mistakes or comments as possible and send them in in an email so that staff can consider that at a later date to make it an even better uh, document. I personally, uh, I'm like you, I did not read the 704 pages, but I did scan them. I looked at every page and went through it as quick as possible to see things. Um, I, I like the uh, color coding of the different sections. I like the uh, tables that were laid out. I thought that that sum summarized things pretty well. I like the definitions. And I had one comment to ask on, uh, I noticed in a few spots, um, somewhere around, I saw page 236, 246, 250, 253, 258. I mean, it just kind of goes on and on, where uh, section 4.3100 uh, was highlighted. Uh, can Julia tell us why those particular ones were highlighted? Yeah, Julia can't, but I can. Um, okay. it, it was highlighted because I made a change and I forgot to go back and take the highlighting off. So that was an absolute oh, okay. error on my part. So. No, no, that's all right. I just was curious, you know, because I noticed it in many, many positions. And it, it wasn't just for the 4.31, it was 3.8 something. And I mean, you know, it was just, it was just an editing issue. So yeah that was my mistake and i apologize for that not a big apology needed for that i mean it shows that you're in the process of making changes okay so uh are we going to discuss anything on articles two and three article five or article four zone regulations Any well different comments? staff oh i'm sorry were you speaking yeah. to me yeah um different staff worked on different sections so i I, Julia, worked on sections one through six, and uh -huh. then other people worked on different sections. I think you heard from Gail that she worked on section four. She worked on another section as well. Um, Ian and Tori, uh, our planners, also worked on various sections. So I would let people address um, the sections that they worked on. So if you have questions about how I move things around on um, one through one and six, please let me know. If you have questions about other sections, I would direct that to the staff who worked on those sections. Okay, so then I guess we're finished with one and six and thank you, Julia, for your participation in that. Um, My pleasure. Let's look at articles two and three if we can then. Uh, who wishes to comment on that one, staff-wise? This is Ian Sisson. I'm the planner who worked on articles two and three. Um, and my spiel is essentially the same as Julia's. The memo there at the beginning of those sections just outlines um, how the sections were reorganized. And um, one thing of note in these two sections, particularly in article three, 
is that um, we've added some graphics to help illustrate some of the concepts um, and rules. So again, trying to make the document more user-friendly um, while not making substantive substantive changes um the addition of some graphics to help illustrate some of those concepts uh is in there so uh i will stop there and i'm happy to answer any questions you have about it yeah one of the pictures i liked was the uh, sloughing off of the land above the uh, houses underneath i thought that was quite a graphic shot from the air uh was that in your section ian i can't remember I on, don't believe that particular graphic was. I think that was in the article, whichever uh, article has the uh, landslide ordinance in it now. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty good graphic. Yeah, it was demonstrated it uh, pretty effectively. Okay, does anybody have uh, questions for Ian on section articles two and three? Not hearing any, let's move on to Article 5. Who would like to, from staff, address Article 5? Hi, this is Victoria Sage. I'm a planner for Clatsop County. Um, so Article 5 was it, some of the special purpose districts from that were in old Article 4 got their got their own section and we added in some bits and pieces from the standards document that related directly to the, those special purpose districts and put them all uh, and reorganized everything and put them all in the same place um and bruce that uh, that landslide picture i put down in the geologic hazard uh, yeah. section and it was just those are just suggested graphics i didn't actually put in um the same sorts of graphics that Ian worked on for the parking and whatnot. If we want to go back and put those in officially later, um, we'll, we can do that, but currently they were just sort of a suggestion. Um, yes, and that's, and I'm open to questions if you have any. Well, personally, I thought that uh, what was presented was a good uh, <laughs> indicator. Uh, I personally don't see why they shouldn't be adopted. I don't know if anybody else has a problem with any of the uh, pictures or graphics that were submitted. Uh, personally, I thought it helped clarify. And I think whatever makes it easy to clarify and what makes it easier for staff to relate to an applicant on what is required and what is needed, I think graphics are a very good way of uh, getting the public to understand what we're trying to get across in the code and all of the other uh, pieces we've put together here. So I personally didn't have a problem and I'm asking if anybody else on the commission had a problem with any of the graphics. I didn't. No. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So let's go to article four and the zone uh, regulations. Uh, Gail, I guess you're on this one. Uh, that's correct. So uh, with the zone changes in Article 4, we've grouped them together by uh, the underlying land use type. So all of the zoning categories that are associated with development lands in the rural communities are grouped together. All of the natural zones are grouped together. And then uh, we pulled the permitted and conditional uses and put them in a table alphabetically just to make it easier to find things. Uh, when we have, a lot of times customers will come in and they'll say, well, where can I do a dog kennel? And so being able to immediately go to a table and find it alphabetically without having to search through pages and pages and pages of code uh, will help us you know, serve people better. Um, also just standardizing the language across the different zones uh, so that a house is called the same thing in all the different zoning districts or a restaurant is called the same thing in all the different zoning districts. Also trying to update some of the terminology that we use. So going from eating and drinking establishment to restaurant or from church to house of worship. Uh, those were a lot of the changes that we've made. Uh, hmm. Article, the changes to article four were presented to you, I believe over a six month period. Um, going going back. Um, so you've seen these changes 
coming through uh, for you know well over half a year now. Um, again, I'm just going to leave my presentation at that and just I'm happy to answer any questions. So does any commissioner have question of staff on uh, section article uh, four zone regulations? Anybody have questions? Okay, well, hearing none, um, Gail, do you wish us to make a recommendation through to the uh, Clatsop Board of Commissioners on this to adopt this code consolidation and modernization? That would be the exact motion that I would like, please. Okay, well, I've thrown it out there. Does anybody wish to make that motion? To adopt, sorry, I'm sorry, I stepped on somebody's toes there. Uh, would like to have somebody uh, make a motion to uh, recommend to the Clatsop County Commissioners to adopt the code consolidation and modernization as presented here. Can we make a clarification that it's not as presented, but with um, uh, errors corrected? So if there are some typos like Chris have found and also the spacing and highlighting and like the actual editing issues? Well, the thing is, that's going to come after we make a recommendation for it to go through to the commissioners and staff can make those changes after we get this format. We're really just presenting a format. So if there's anything obvious, I agree with you. Uh, Gail, how would you like us to address that? Okay, so staff intends to clean up items that we know are incorrect. The, the adoption does not adopt a formatting in terms of a certain font size, spaces, um, you know, italics versus bold, that is not the point of the adoption and those things can be changed at any time. So I just want to be very right. clear that even if there's a spacing error at any time, I can go back and fix that. Um, what we will do is we'll go back and find um, the errors that you've talked about today. What I'm concerned about is if you base your mo motion on us correcting all the errors and I inadvertently miss miss one, um, then I'm not conforming to your recommendation, and then the board theoretically has a reason to deny it or delay it. So exactly, exactly. So I think we've got to take the step one, Nadia, and and then do exactly what you were saying: clean it up, make the changes. Would you like to comment, Nadia? No, that's fine. I just wanted to make yeah. sure that that was still going to It's happen. not going to get overlooked. Yeah, <laughs> staff is definitely aware of it. And I think we've all, yeah. uh, you know, did something on that. So it'll, it'll get changed. All right. Is somebody going to make that motion, please? I would like to make the motion, but I'm not sure of the wording other than to say that we adopted as presented today by the planning staff. Okay. So your your motion is actually a recommendation to the board of commissioners. So you, as the planning commission, do not actually make the decision to adopt. You just okay. recommend. I, that I the move board that we adopt. recommend to the board of that we recommend that the board of commissioners adopt this. Is that sufficient? One second. But, yeah. So. We've made a, mo uh, uh, made a motion to recommend to the Board of Commissioners to adopt the code consolidation and modernization as presented by staff. Is that sufficient? Nadia is nodding her head. I think that counts as a second. Okay. No, and I think Myrna, it was Myrna's. Uh, yep, Myrna made, made that. Yep, that's Myrna's. And then I but, think we but not had nodding Chris, head as if he were and then we had Chris Farrar seconded, I believe. Is that That's correct? That's true. Okay, dokie. Yeah. So we've got a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you very much, Gail. We'll send that on to the Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments and input. So now we move on to the comprehensive plan update. Uh, can you give us an update on the on the update? Yes, I can. Uh, so we had uh, stopped meeting in January to give staff a 
bit of a break where we could begin redrafting goals one through four uh, with the intention that we would start back up in April. So staff did draft revisions to Article 1's or goals one through four and sent them off to Department of Land Conservation Development, DLCD, for review. We've gotten comments back from the state on goals one, two, and three. They're still working on goal four. Uh, when the pandemic uh, hit and we went into lockdown, we did cancel our April and May meetings. We reached out in late April to the committee members uh, with some information just to kind of keep them involved in the process and got some feedback that maybe at that point people were still a little bit overwhelmed by life and um, world events. So uh, we, we, we delayed again in May, but uh, starting in June now we are kicking off with just a test meeting like we did with the Planning Commission last month just to see where people are with their lives, how the technology works, look at an updated schedule. And uh, we had our first one last night with the Northeast Citizen Advisory Committee and that seemed to go pretty well. They seem pretty eager to get back into the process. Um, we will be continuing everything electronically at this point, uh, at least until there's a vaccine found. It actually is um, working out well in many ways. There's a lot of benefits to it because um, you know, it reduces our carbon footprint as a county. We're not driving uh, vehicles out to different meeting sites and people aren't driving around to come to a meeting site. Um, we're looking to go pretty much paperless at this point. Um, and so that will help reduce our footprint as well. And there are just a lot of different benefits right now. So our next meeting, we have the Southwest Coastal meeting uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. We've got the Clats at Plains Committee at 2 p.m. on Thursday, June 11th. Uh, next week, we've got the LC Jewel Seaside Rural Meeting at 10 o'clock. The countywide meeting will be June 18th at 4 p.m. And then the Lewis and Clark uh, Citizen Advisory Committee will be meeting on June 25th at 5.30 p.m. Okay. Well, that's still quite an agenda that you're going to get through. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, it's yeah. good that we get everybody into that. Any comments from the board on that? Gail, I'm wondering if um, just given the current state of the world and everybody supposedly staying home, um, that are there, are you guys making extra efforts to get the word out for participation of not just the committee members, but also the public? Um, you know, I, I think it's really important that we, I, it's so great you guys have the website up and running and you have a Facebook page. I'm wondering if you're doing extra work to make sure that the, um, that our communities know about this opportunity to, to participate from home. Yes, so um, it's a good question and it did come up again last night as well at our meeting. One thing that we had planned on doing as staff before the pandemic hit was to send a quarterly postcard out to everybody in the unincorporated areas uh, with the upcoming meeting dates for all the different committees. With the test meetings right now, we're trying to reestablish a regular meeting date and time so that we can get that postcard out again. Um, last night, Northeast, they had three of their five members present, and so they did not establish a regular meeting date and time yet. Um, they are want to do a doodle poll so that everybody can participate from the committee. Um, but that would be one way that we would um, get the word out on a broader scale is to send those postcards out quarterly. And we did put money in the budget for that in the upcoming fiscal year. All right. Also with yeah. the um, uh, current state of racism in the United States and Black Lives Matter, um, I've just been thinking more about um, inclusivity in our just all of our work and the importance to reach out to um, underserved communities. And in this county, um, you know, the largest non-European uh, uh, group are the Latinx community. And I'm wondering if we've made any efforts to um, uh, to reach out to include them both in this, but I was actually also thinking about in terms of our planning commission openings, it sure would be great to start seeing um, more people uh, with uh, Spanish language upbringings um, represented in our government. 
So I'm wondering if there's any extra efforts that are happening on the county level to be more inclusive. Okay, I cannot speak to what's going on with all the other departments and boards and commissions. Um, I know that um, as a fault of mine, I did not specifically reach out to Lower Columbia Hispanic Society or other organizations to deliberately recruit from a particular community. Um, so that was a failing on my part. Um, you know, certainly we're happy to do that in the future and we'll do that. And if you have other suggestions, we would certainly welcome them. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Okay, then let's look down to the special projects update uh, dealing with the elk, I guess. The elk saga continues. Um, we continue to meet twice a month with the different subcommittees, both land use and human behavior and the steering committee. And um, we're still theoretically working to the adoption of a declaration of cooperation in September of this year, so. All right. Any questions of staff on this one? All right. Looking at the project status report, um, I see that we still don't have the Arch Cape show going. They got a 12 month extension. Um, Nadia, have you heard anything on that one? Do you know? I think we should just never hold our breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. But I was just surprised with all the effort that went into getting that through that we haven't seen any progress yet. Uh, that I thought that one was going to be something that uh, moved ahead fairly promptly. And then I uh, today, Leo Astor and the uh, the Falcon Cove Water uh, Moratorium is being allowed right. to expire. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That's a that's a totally different issue. Um, then I saw at uh, Westport. Uh, is that true that the livery stable is up for sale? That uh, the property is up for sale? Did I hear that? It is. That is true. Yes. Hmm. So I guess that one won't move forward either. Unless the new owner wants to do something on that. Okay, does anybody else have any comments on the project status report? Hearing none, other business. Does anybody have uh, some business that they wish to bring up? Uh, I sure. have a few. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Nadia. Um, I just wanted to note, um, I was just looking back at our minutes and what we talked about um, that I, so the water quality monitoring that we discussed at our last meeting um, that the state does in our ocean waters and also some of the fresh waters um, adjacent uh, is up and running. I got my first report this last month, so that's good. They did not do any um, testing in um, area in state parks that were closed even though they could have gotten access through state parks. But, um, uh, and that, you know, Tola Vanna Wayside is actually one of our biggest violation areas and our biggest areas of public use and children playing in toxic waters. Um, but at least it's up and running and I will expect that next month they'll get that area tested um, for their first time for the season. So that's really great. Um, there was a question last time about swimming pools opening. It looks like swimming pools will be able to open under phase two. So I know that the seaside pool is looking at potentially opening and that was a surprise to them. They thought they would have to wait until phase three. Um, and the seaside library is open as of today as well. So um, I know those aren't planning it. I guess they are, they're planning issues, but they're not planning issues. But um, I think that's just great news. Um, and uh, it, it like yeah. It looked like uh, State Parks was cutting over 40 uh, staff just as part of a budgetary cutback. And I know that certainly uh, does impact us along Classic County. Yeah, so they're, they're cutting 47 full-time staff, like regular staff, plus they weren't able to bring on 812 seasonal staff for the state. So that means like all the people that they bring on to clean the bathrooms and to run the check stations at Fort Stevens or normally Ecola and Oswald West um, 
none of them and um Nahal and Bay, none of them will come on. Um I went hiking for the first time in Oz West yes day before yesterday and none of the trails are um brushed, they're all grown over and um so it's it's pretty wild out there actually right now, which is kind of neat. But um but as use increases, it's gonna get ugly probably. Um and certainly things are not going to be that clean. So bathrooms that are being used, um, I think will not be safe in terms of COVID. So um, um, it's definitely a, a major travesty for our communities. Any impact on marine reserve that you've heard? Well, all the county, I mean, all the state agencies were directed to reduce their budgets. Um, they're in the middle of their biennium luckily. So they kind of had their money all allocated until next year. Um, but I know the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife cut their budget. Their first cut was um, there, nobody's allowed to hire anybody else, um, including their what they normally do, their seasonals. And they, um, anything that was, yeah, anything that was open, they can't refill all the savings on having open seats that all that money gets swept, got swept into the general budget. Um, so a lot of that stuff is happening, I think, across the board. Um, so that's ODFNW is the agency that manages. Um, and they also lost some of their enforcement money, which they provide to Oregon um, State Police to do their um, enforcement. And we do have um, violators, crabbers primarily, in um, Cape Falcon still that come in um, in the dead of the night sometimes. Um, and then we have some recreationalists too, but mostly I think that's accidental. Um, but uh, I think we're okay for from a Cape Falcon standpoint. I think state parks is really in a lot more trouble. Um, I also just wanted to acknowledge that we had an election and uh, the um, makeup of our county commission is going to significantly change um, starting at the in January. So um, the interests of the two people that were elected are significantly different and. Um, I'll note that um, you know a lot of discussion with, with this group here, but also around the comprehensive plan has been um, integrating uh, uh, the climate and, and um, trying to mitigate climate change into the comp plan. And I'm not sure if that will be of interest to those newly elected uh, commissioners. So we have some- Just, just to, as a obvious follow-up to Nadia's observation, the uh, mother of uh, one of the existing county commissioners was one of the most strident uh, about the restacking of the planning commission a few years ago. You know, it is certainly something that has uh, crossed her mind, I have to think. Uh, and that'll be interesting to see if uh that has any any effect uh, at, at one point we had a a planning commission that seemed to be consistently opposed to the concept of planning and uh, the solution was to start fresh you know and just uh it'll be interesting to watch period Okay, any other comments? Hearing none, then I thank everybody sure. for their attendance. Sure, sure. I just had yes. this is Gail. Um, right, Gail. Ian, um, Ian has something to share with the commission about his uh, story map and the comp plan update. And I just wanted to let the commission know that the um, planning planning commission appointments will be going to the board on June 24th. Um, in addition to Commissioner Strickland and Commissioner Farrar, who uh, asked to be reappointed, we did receive uh, three other applications. So. Good. Thank Thanks. you, Gail. Thanks. You'll note if you see the chat bubble in the upper right hand corner of your screens, I've, I've sent you a link. Um, I sent an email out a couple of weeks ago to all of you and our advisory committee members about a new tool we've launched to educate the community about the comprehensive plan update process. 
So in response to um, something Nadia brought up, just trying to uh, widen our net and get more people involved in the process, we've launched this story map and questionnaire tool. So it's an interactive tool where people can look at uh, the comprehensive plan update scope schedule. Uh, they can look at all the existing goals. They can look at the statewide planning goals and they can respond to questionnaires um, so far on goals one through five um, through SurveyMonkey links that are embedded in that, in that um, story map. So it's a good place to find all the information in one place and also to start collecting some feedback. So if you could share it with your networks, it would be much appreciated. So far it's been live for two weeks and we only have um, three to five responses on each of the questionnaires. So we'd like to see more on that. Thank you. Does Gail anybody have Ian. questions on Ian for that? Nadia, you can go ahead. Yeah. Gail and Ian, do you ever boost your Facebook posts when you do things like this? Because I really, I mean, it, it reaches a lot more people when you pay and it's not that expensive. No, we do not. Are you allowed to? Because you might consider that, I mean, postcards are nice and all, but um, these days, you know, people are very active online. I would have to check with our IT uh, department and see what their policy is about boosting. I don't know. Okay. Any other comments and other business? Okay, well, I've got one comment to make. Uh, seeing we've adopted the May 12th, 2020 regular meeting minutes uh, as submitted, I will make a copy, uh, Gail, and uh, sign it and drop it off at the office tomorrow because I'm going to be up in Astoria. So I can do it that way if that's appropriate. Okay, that'd be fine. Thank you, Bruce. Okie doke. Well, with no more business, I thank everybody for their attendance and uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce.